Welcome to worship today here at Western Boulevard. On this, the first Sunday of August, how did that happen? Um, it's wonderful to see all of you here, especially if you're a guest with us. We welcome you. We hope you find this time of worship an encounter with the living, loving God. I invite everyone, if you would, take a minute and sign the fellowship pads. Those are located along the center aisle of your pew. Then let me highlight a couple of things to call them to your attention as far as ministry and active activity in our church's life in the weeks ahead. Um, would remind you that this Wednesday we have a special stewardship dinner. Uh, it'll begin at 5.45 in the Fellowship Hall. We're thrilled to welcome Olanda Carr from the Presbyterian Foundation. He will be our guest speaker this Wednesday. If you haven't had a chance yet to sign up, we're welcome to still come and, and sign up for that. You'll see a QR code or you can call the church office tomorrow. He's going to be talking about planned giving and how that is a key part of stewardship. And no matter where you are in life, no matter how, what we have, those, that's another example of how we can reflect thanksgiving back to God for all God has done for us. So we hope you can come and join us. We will have child care available if anyone needs that. Um, so we look forward to seeing you this Wednesday, beginning at 545. Next Sunday, um, we will have our poetry and praise uh, worship service one more time with the at the table service. That'll be at five o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, if you have any interest and desire to share your writings, whether it be poetry, narratives, whatnot, please feel free to reach out to me or Van Anthony Hall, and we'd love uh, for you to share that or have that shared as part of our worship next Sunday evening. And then at the end of the month, uh, on a Saturday, August 24th, we are thrilled to be going, going back to the lake, having a day at the lake. Uh, it'll begin at 10 a.m. We'll have a lunch uh, devotional and a lunch around noon. Uh, folks are going to have their boats. Uh, there's, there's places for, for games, for hiking uh, at Falls Lake. So you see a lot of information about that. Please, it's helpful for us if you're able to sign up to let us know if you're coming as far as helping us plan for food for that day. So we look forward uh, to that day and look forward to seeing you on that then. You may have noticed something's a little different today. <laughs> Unfortunately, Justin Berg is homesick today. Uh, he's not able to be with us. So we're going, we're going old fashioned today. We're gonna do everything. We're gonna sing unaccompanied in acapella and we're gonna change a couple of hymns so that we can do that in a more confident way. <laughs> so the first hymn, the first hymn is gonna be number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth. And then the last hymn, is going to be 525, Let Us Break Bread Together. I will, I will introduce the hymns, don't worry. You don't have to write, remember that right now. Um, and I want to thank the choir, and I especially want to thank Joe Burmester, because he has stepped in. Oh, I, I have. <laughs> he is going to give us the notes and the tunes, and we are going to sing together. Everything else we should be able to sing uh, unaccompanied. And if not, you know what? It's a joyful noise to the Lord. <laughs> Let's continue our worship. I'll invite Millie to come forward and lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. Come, let us worship our God. For there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, caring of all, who is above all and through all and in all. We come with humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another in love. Come, let us worship the Lord our God. Let us sing together hymn number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth. Oh, Yeah. 
Let us confess our sin together. For we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Let us pray. God, you have called us to live lives worthy of the calling to which we have been called. But we confess to you, each other, that we have not always spoken the truth in love. We have not always made every effort to maintain the unity spirit in the bond of peace. Forgive us, and by your grace, help us to grow in every way into him who is head, Jesus Christ. Amen. The bread of life God sends is the offering of the only forgotten Son. Whoever comes in Jesus Christ shall never be hungry. Whoever believes in him shall never thirst. Believe in the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As the Lord has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. Share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> <laughs> to invite the children to come up and sit with me for a minute.
guys. So what have you guys done that's really fun this summer? You went to the beach, yeah. Yeah. Have you gone swimming this summer? Yeah, you gone swimming? No. Okay. Well, there are a lot of fun things you can do throughout the summer, and they can all be really tiring, can't they? You can spend a long day at the beach. What do you do maybe to help yourself get more energy? You guys eat food? Yeah, yeah. You sleep, yeah, me too. Yeah, but we can eat food to help us get our energy back because it helps to nourish our body. In today's Bible story, we're gonna learn that Jesus calls himself the bread of life. So not necessarily how he doesn't nourish us in the way that food will nourish us, but he nourishes our souls rather than our bodies. And one of the things we do to remember this is communion, which we're gonna do today. That kind of helps us remember that, um, it's a symbol that helps us remember that he nourishes our souls, kind of in the way that food nourishes our body. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus and that he helps us and nourishes our souls by being the bread of life. Amen. All right, guys, what do we say? Prayer of Illumination. Holy God, may the reading of your word be for us, the bread you send from heaven that gives life to the world. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus 16, reading from verse 2 to 4 and verse 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, said to them, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, and then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. Then the Israelites saw it. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Our psalm today is Psalm 72. I'm going to be reading from verses 1 through 7. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel lesson today is from John's gospel from chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Why are you here today? What leads you to get up on a day when you could be resting at home or doing a fun activity somewhere instead of coming to worship? Did you come of your own free will? Or did someone say, we are going to church today? Are you here because you are hurting and in need of comfort? Are you here because you are grateful and you wish to express your thanks? Are you here because it looks good on your personal internal resume? What's your motivation for coming to church today? We all have different answers to those questions. Many times how we answer those questions changes over the course of our lifetime depending on what's happening in a particular stage of our life. We can all confess that sometimes our motivations have been self-serving, to be sure. Yes, even your own pastor will admit that he didn't always want to go to church when he was a teenager. And that was even with his father as the pastor. Often our motivation for being active in the community of faith is directly tied to what spiritually nourishes and sustains us. 
Benjamin Sparks writes, there was a name in 19th century China for persons who came to church because they were hungry for material food. They converted, were baptized, joined the church, and remained active members as long as their physical needs were met through the generosity of the congregation. But once their prospects improved and they and their families no longer needed rice, they drifted away from the church. Hence, missionaries called them rice Christians. The crowds that followed Jesus to Capernaum to find him after he fed the 5,000 in the wilderness are like those who see faith and church membership instrumentally as something they can choose for themselves to use for their own needs or to pursue their own interests. Christians like the Rice Christians of the 19th century are not a new problem but are as old as the gospel itself. In the story from John's gospel, the crowds were plentiful and they were eager to find Jesus after the events we heard of last Sunday. Chapter 6 begins with Jesus feeding 5,000 people with the five barley loaves and two fish. And it's... John's account of this miracle story, and it causes people to respond with passion and expectation that Jesus was gonna, was, would be their king. That crazed passion causes Jesus to flee up to the mountains and later to come to his disciples by walking on water to the boat out on the sea. So it's on the heels of these two miraculous acts of Jesus that this story comes. And it makes palpable the frenzy the people felt toward this prophet who is to come into the world. When the crowds find Jesus, he addresses their fervor with some reality. You are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. The people saw in Jesus a performer, one who showed them signs, and they wanted more of the same. What sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe you. The crowds experience the feeding of the 5,000 not as a spiritual feeding by God, but as a magic act that shook them from their stupor. Now, they're searching for more of the same. Yet that is not what Jesus has to offer them. And he does not answer their question. Brian Stoffergen writes, The question Jesus answers is, Why are you, namely the crowd, here? His answer to that unspoken question is, You are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate from the bread and were filled. The use of the present tense for seek implies that the crowd is still seeking. A probable implication is that as long as their motives are centered in their bellies, they will never really discover Jesus. Jesus is introducing the people to new lenses through which they can view their world and their lives. The people saw Jesus' act only on the surface what alleviated their immediate physical hunger and thirst. He wants to, them to see what underlies that miraculous act. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. It is because of God's love for creation that he sent his Son into this world. It wasn't to perform magic and to stir amazement and wonder 
on the surface of our lives. It was to stir in the core of our being a deep sense of gratitude and yearning to feed on God's love in Jesus Christ. That is why when the people ask for this food, Jesus responds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. That is what the signs of walking on the water and the feeding the 5,000 pointed to the bread of heaven. They were not in and of themselves what the people were to feed on. They were signs that pointed to God, which led the people to seek and to find God. It can be easy to feed off the signs, but that will not feed the spiritual hunger you possess. That hunger will only be filled by Jesus himself, the true bread of heaven. Sparks continues, too often we forget how to pursue what really matters. We are accustomed to inviting people into the community of faith for all the wrong reasons, for the right kind of worship, for political engagement on behalf of the poor and downtrodden, for the sake of a Christian America, for a strong youth and family ministry, for the opportunity to practice mission in a downtown location. Yet what we have to offer in Christ and by Christ and because of Christ, first and foremost, is soul food, which lasts forever and does not change with the changing circumstances of the church or the world. It is soul food that we desire and soul food in which we will rejoice long after our bellies are full of rice. We North American Christians have preached a broken, truncated gospel. We have been good marketers rather than true witnesses. We have bought into a culture that rewards consumers and addresses their needs instead of proclaiming a gospel that offers us faith in the only begotten Son who gave his life for the sins of the world and who was lifted up so that all who believe in him may have eternal life. He is the bread of life. Those who come to him will never be hungry. And those who put their trust in him will never thirst. And so, we come this morning to this table to receive the sacrament that Christ instituted on our behalf. This is the time when we affirm that God feeds us continually with the bread of life. A past version of our denomination's book of order stated that Christ himself is the host at his table and that Christ himself is fully present and received in the supper. In other words, Christ has invited us today to this feast so that our souls might be filled, not just our bellies, Christ is our host today, not just the one who performs miraculous acts that amaze us. Christ is the source of our thanksgiving today, for it is through him that God has given us new life. May our thanksgiving and our gratitude be offered to the bread of life, who nourishes not just our bellies, but most importantly, nourishes our souls. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen.
Our second hymn is number 481, I Believe in God the Father. Let us stand together as we sing. I believe in God the Father, merciful and mighty Lord, maker of the earth and heavens, whom we worship and adore. And in Jesus Christ the Son, only Savior, Sovereign One, by the Holy Spirit given, born of Mary, Blessed Virgin. Under Pilate, Jesus suffered, faithful to his final breath. He was crucified and buried, and descended into death. From the grave he did arise, he ascended through the skies, now enthroned with God in heaven, he will judge the dead and living. I believe in God the Spirit and the church in every place. Saints in glorious communion, all forgiven, full of grace. Flesh and blood will live again. Life in Christ will never end. Holy Spirit, Son and Father, I will praise your name forever. You may be seated. This time I would like to invite Noah Freeman to come forward. Noah is one of our three Betty Connett Scholarship recipients this year. Uh, last week we recognized Ollie Milchuk. Um, and Noah is one of the others. And then Lydia Smith is our third. Unfortunately, Lydia has got COVID today. Um, and sick. So this is just a time when everyone's sick, I guess. Um, but we hopefully have a chance to recognize her uh, here on some Sunday here coming up, hopefully um, soon. But I wanted to just share um, who, what Noah is. Noah uh, is going to be receiving a, a $1,500 scholarship through the Betty Connett Scholarship Fund. He is enrolled uh, at Clemson University, uh, will be studying mechanical engineering. And I wanted to share in Noah's words uh, why this scholarship is important and valuable and meaningful to him. I would like this scholarship in order to help my parents. They have done so much for me throughout my whole life, from taking care of me when I have been incredibly sick to leaving straight from work to help warm me up for baseball tryouts without a glove. They have always been there for me and have helped me with anything I have ever needed. I have done my best to return the favor by helping them out in my own ways and not letting their sacrifices go to waste. I will continue to work hard in and out of the classroom. I will continue to help out my community in any way I can. Lastly, I will always love my family and my community and never forget the people who helped me get to where I am today and the people that will help me get to the next big step in my life. Noah, we are excited for what God has in store for you and we are pleased to share with you those of, make sure I give, just giving you one, hang on, there we go. As your, and then most importantly, there's the check. <laughs> We're excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. So today we are going to continue our worship by offering our lives and our gifts today. And you can do that in silence. Um, <laughs> Or, or hum whatever tune you would like, and then we will begin the doxology when we're ready. <laughs> I don't 
don't think I need any of that. I think I just need this. Oh, it's up there. Okay. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all people here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. Praise triune God whom we adore. Amen. Loving God, as you fed your people in the wilderness, use our gifts, time, and talents as the manna to meet the hungers of the world in which we live. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare to come and receive this feast, which our Lord has set before us as a host, we will, just as you note, just to note, we will receive communion today by coming forward. Uh, by receiving the elements row by row uh, here at the front, and then you're invited to return to your seat by the side aisle and to place uh, the juice cups in the trays that are there on the end. And then as a part of our great prayer of thanksgiving, we will sing the responses as we often do. Uh, they are very familiar to us, and we will sing them as a part of our worship. Before we come to this table, we always lift up in prayer those joys or concerns that are on our hearts and minds as individuals and as the community of faith. Let me share with you some that I am aware of and then invite you, if you have any, to raise your hand and uh, we will bring a microphone to you and ask you to share so that we might all be aware together. We continue to remember Shirley Griffith. Uh, she continues in her recovery from hip replacement surgery back in June, uh, but she and Greg appreciate your ongoing prayers. Becky Burmester asked for prayers for her, their dear friends, Joanne and Rick Giglio. Uh, Rick has now been moved to longer-term uh, intensive care rehab over at WakeMed for the next four weeks as he recovers from pneumonia and sepsis, and so our prayers are with them. Uh, we, Susan Smith asked for prayers for the family of Janice Perry. Janice was a longtime colleague of hers at the hospital for over 29 years, and Janice died last Sunday after a battle with cancer. And so her, she asked for prayers for her son and for all of those who mourn her loss. And we remember today uh, those in Florida and then later here in our own state who will be impacted by the tropical storm. I won't name it. Um, it's spelled wrong, by the way. Um, but just our prayers are with all of those who will be impacted by those rains and winds, and we pray for a lower loss of life and property and know that there will be great need for recovery moving forward. Are there others whom you would mention that we might be hold them in our prayers today? Verna's got one up here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This week uh, is the Cairo's prison ministry, and Interestingly enough, it follows along what Frank has told us today. These men come to this program, 42 uh, residents of Central Prison will be there this week as they feast. Uh, they come for the food, uh, and they don't, uh, they make that pretty clear early on, but they find Jesus there, and it's a powerful experience. Um, 
I would ask for your prayers this week as we, uh, the men will go in on Wednesday. Our team goes in Wednesday afternoon and we'll be there until Saturday afternoon and we'll be feeding them all their meals during that time period and just uh, for safety and of course uh, with the storm coming, we're, but it, God has always let this ministry go forward. I, you know, it's an adventure every time, and I'm sure that he will lift it up. Um, so thank you for your prayers uh, for this ministry this week. Thank you, Verna. We will be holding all of you, and especially the men who will be coming for that in our prayers this week. Are there others? We will hold all of these in our prayers this day. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in this feast which he has prepared. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. For all these things we praise you, joining our voices to the whole company of heaven who sing together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Praise to you for the gift of this holy meal. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Praise to you for the gift of this holy meal. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. 
Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With all your holy ones of all times and places. With the earth and all of its creatures. With sun, moon, and stars. We praise you, O God. Blessed and holy Trinity. Now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, come and receive the gifts of God. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. 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 shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you, Tony. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. You're welcome. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Blood of Christ shed for you. <laughs> the blood of Christ shed for you, Jack. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 The blood of Christ shed for you.
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let's go see the choir. blood of Christ shed for you, Joe. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 Let's go ahead and serve each other. You see, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. You can just put it in there. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Let us turn to God in prayer. Loving God, as you sent the angel to minister to Elijah with the bread of heaven, send us out in this ministry of love and grace. Strengthen and nourish all who celebrate this sacrament, that through our communion in the body and blood of Christ, we may all know the comfort of your eternal presence. In his name we pray, amen. Hey, our closing hymn, as you may have heard the choir hum, is Let Us Break Bread Together, number 525, number 525. Let us stand together as we sing. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun. O oh Lord, have mercy on me. You all sound pretty good. Friends, go from this place in peace. Trust and serve the Lord. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. Amen.